glad to be in the house of the Lord this evening. Oh, you can do better than that if God's been good to you this week. I wish somebody go ahead and praise him in this house this evening. I'm glad to see each and every one that was able to make it here tonight as we gather to worship and fellowship with one another. I won't hold you up too long. Uh, we will be having our block party, or not block party, our fall festival uh, this Saturday. Uh, rain or shine. So rain or shine, we will be having it. We do have measures in place that if it is to rain, that we will continue. So we're looking forward to this time that the family and also the service community to be able to gather on that day. Uh, so we're looking forward to that. Mark that in your calendar. There is a, a link on Facebook and regarding to that event. So share it, like it, let people know what God is doing here in Rossville, Georgia. But above all, who's ready to praise the Lord tonight? We got a few people. I said, how many is ready to praise the Lord tonight? I know that uh, if it's any testament to you, to my week, I can tell you that it seems like the enemy's tried to fight all week long. It just seems one thing after the other. But how many knows we serve a God that's more than able? That when we incline our cry to him, that he will hear from heaven. I'm believing tonight that God is getting ready to do something mightily. Look at your neighbor and say, God's getting ready to do it. I know that we can often think that sometimes that if our mindsets or where we're at, it can kind of influence what God can do but how many knows that when our faith overrides where we're at then things begin to shift in the supernatural uh, that's a few but how many knows your faith can begin to shift something in the supernatural I'm believing that there might have been some natural things that come against you there might have been some mindsets there might have even been an argument but I'm believing that when you get in the presence and when you begin to praise God and have faith that there's getting ready to be a supernatural shift in your situation today. Well, we're going to go ahead and go to the Lord in prayer. So I, if you're standing, if you would, stand those that are seated as we come to the Lord in agreement. We're also going to come to this time to the Lord in our tithe and our offering. Uh, we do also, for those watching over live stream, we do have Cash App, Venmo, and Tidely that if you would like to give online, those that are tuning in over live and part of our online church family, we're thankful for you that tune in. Uh, and also here in body, we have our offering plates up, so after prayer, you can just come forth in your giving. So if you would, everybody put your offering up in the air. Those over a live stream, just put it in up in the air. We're going to pray that the Lord will bless this offering and bless this tithe. How many knows that the Bible says that if you'll give, it'll be pressed down, good measure, shaken, and overflowing, giving back to you. There's something in the giving when you trust God in your giving and in your offering. So we're going to go to the Lord in prayer, and we're going to move forward in what this service has in store tonight. Lord, we thank you for the opportunity, God, to come together in fellowship, Lord. God, I ask that you be with each and every one that's here tonight and those on our live stream. God, I thank you, Lord, that we serve a God that's greater than the circumstance, Lord. I thank you that what is in us is greater than is in the world. Lord, right now we come in agreement to come against any hindrance, God, any misfortune, anything in the attack of the enemy that may try to come against us. But right now, God, we choose to open up our voice, God. We choose to use our key, God, to open up the heavens in this service right now. Lord, right now we bind every assignment, every principality, every personality, God, that is coming to this place, God. But, God, we choose to look unto you, Lord, to loose the fullness of your glory, God, that it begin to move in this place and amend hearts, God. And, Lord, we ask that you open up the heavens on the giver right now. God, Lord, that you will bless this offering and bless this tithe in only the way you can. In Jesus' precious name, and everybody said, amen. And if you will, come forth in your word. Did you come to praise and worship tonight, amen? Can you hear say Jesus tonight? Come on now. Well, some have made Jesus a game that they play. 
Somebody say, he's my everything tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah. As I kneel in the darkness, in the middle of the night, I'm praying for assurance, everything. 
that I can and there's always something that gives a hiccup in my life there's always something that tries to come at me brother Adam from the left and to the right that tells me one I'm not good enough two I'm not saved enough 
three, I'm not filled enough. But can I tell you that when Jesus got a hold of you, he didn't do a halfway job. Come on, somebody. Think about that tonight. When you really put your faith and trust in Jesus and gave him all you had, he did not do a halfway job. I thank God he doesn't do stuff halfway. Tell your neighbor, say, he didn't do a halfway job with me. When he saved me, he saved me all the way. When he delivered me, he delivered me all the way. Do I got anybody, anybody in the building that says, when God saved me, he saved me all the way. Glory to God. And there's no devil in hell that can make me doubt my salvation. There's no devil in hell that can say that I'm not good enough. Because when Jesus died on the cross, I became worthy. I became, oh, I became a child of the King tonight. I dare you tonight. Somebody comes to you and questions who you are in God. Tell them to get behind you. Because those that are not for you, they're against you. But if I got Jesus on my side, if God be for me, I said, if God be for me, anybody hear me? If God be for me, who, what can be against me tonight? There's an identity crisis in the church tonight. There's an identity crisis. People pulled you, dragged you long enough, try to make you think a certain way and make you feel a certain way. I'm talking to somebody tonight. God is saying tonight it's time to get your identity back. It's time to get who I called you to be back. When I, I remember in school we'd have career day back in high school. Thank God I graduated. I was smart enough to do so. Amen. But you wore a name tag with your name on it and the occupation that you wanted to do. It says, hello, my name is... And it, you can put it in the blank right there what your name is. The devil has put a target on the child of God's back. From the day you got saved, there has been a target on your back. And the devil would love nothing more than to take your identity tonight. I don't know why I'm saying all this for somebody. He would love nothing more. Listen, child of God, you've not done too much for the kingdom of God. There is still more work to do. And the devil knows if he just gets a hold of a praying church or a God-seeking church or somebody that's not ashamed of the gospel, it'll mess his plan up. But I come tonight to tell you that there is hope for America. There is still hope for the church. And there is still hope in the blood of Jesus. So what's your name tonight? <laughs> Can we just be childlike tonight? What's your name tonight? My name is Redeemed. My name is Blood Bond. Anybody got what I'm feeling tonight? My name is a true born child of God tonight. We're going to do this last song. One of my favorite songs to do. Because there's never been a trial that I faced where I did not feel the hand of God. Now look, there's coming a day the Bible talks about you keep going wrong, keep doing wrong, he'll turn you over to a reprobate mind. What's that mean? That's old preaching. You don't hear that no more. That means God will have nothing more to do with you. He'll let you live your own life how you want to live it. You'll never feel the hand of God anymore. But I came to tell you tonight, tonight is your last chance. Tonight is your last opportunity. Let God get a hold of your life tonight and turn you around for the better. The song goes like this. I've learned to trust in Jesus. Now look, these altars are always open. If you're led to come, come. Well, through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon His word. Look at that first verse, guys. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There were times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation that His trials only come to make me strong. Help me pray, somebody. Well, I've been a lot of places.
every valley I thank Him for the storms that He's brought me through For if I never had a problem I would know that my God could solve it that we feel like God is so far away from us and we feel like that every time we go to do something good or pray that it doesn't reach the ceiling even most times but I'm glad that my God is not confined to four walls I'm glad my God is not confined to a solar system I'm glad that every time I call on the Lord and I mean business He hears my cry now look, when He ascended up to heaven he was going to sit at the right hand of the Father. He's not just sitting there twiddling his thumbs wondering what to do with us tonight. He is making intercession for you and I. What's that mean? Every time we pray to the Father, it's got to go through Jesus first. Oh! Because Jesus knows what it's like to be hungry. Jesus knows what it's like to be lonely. Jesus knows what it's like to be in his wits end. But when we call out to our Abba Father, our Abba Father is God up in heaven that knows every cry, that knows every tear. He's a God that knows everything tonight. And because of that, I sing this song.
you stand beside her? The Lord said he's healing tonight. I don't know what, but he says you lift your hands right now. Lift them. Lift your hands. He's healing something in your body tonight. I don't know what it is. I just see the outpouring of the oil. <laughs> About to come over you, honey. Ah, don't take this lightly. God is fixing to pour heavenly oil from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Now, David was anointed one time, but he had many anointings to follow. And God says you've been waiting for that extra anointing. That anointing that's going to break every burden, every stronghold. My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Every inse insecurity, every fear of not being enough. He's healing. I know what it is. He's healing that heart tonight. In the name of Jesus, be whole in the name of Jesus. Receive the oil. Receive the oil of healing right now. Hey, yes, glory to God. He's healing right now. He's healing. He's healing right now. Stretch your hands this way, church. He's healing right now. That heart belongs to God. That mind belongs to God. In the name of Jesus. I don't care who I make mad. Your calling was not just to wag around all them kids and bring them to church. Your calling's much deeper than wagging kids around. Your calling is to feed the kids. And God is restoring, reestablishing His calling on your life in the name of Jesus. Hey! say this tonight you have mothered your kids you're about to mother a church church I don't know if you feel what I feel he calls you mother tonight Lift your hands on this house. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. 
Oh, Lord. Oh, God. Can I just play softly if you would, guys? Thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. When the tongues went forth, and I and I usually ain't never heard, but I heard the Spirit of the Lord for the first time I've ever heard it. And I heard the Spirit of the Lord said that I have seen the lie. But he said, I'm going to see it through. I don't know what it might be, but I spirit the Spirit of the Lord saying to, to Amy and Jesse that he's seen the lie, that he's heard the lies. But he that started a good work shall see it all the way through. And I believe the Lord tonight is renewing in the spirits and mind and heart that he saw the lie, but he's still going to see it all the way through. Terry, come up here, Terry. I've been sitting back, and Pastor Hunter's flowing. And I kept on hearing, and then the Spirit of the Lord said, I'd seen the lie, and he's going to see it through. But I couldn't help to think about in the Bible where it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities and spiritual wickedness. And I heard it, and I just keep hearing the Lord saying, and I was looking at Terry, that you were wrestling to come forth, but you've been wrestling with some personality. And I believe that just as much as the word that went forth for Sister Amy that, he heard the lies. There's been some lies told on you, and I think it even been this week. And that it might have been all you could to fuster up to get here today. But I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying that the fight is not yours, that he's already won it. But if you'll be strong in his might, put on that whole armor that God's getting ready to bring you through. If you would, just raise your hand. cancel every assignment of the enemy on her life, Lord. God, that she's been living in a fog ever since Audrey, Lord. But right now, God, I lift the fog off her in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I thank you that the principality and the personalities that have been in that home, God, that even come from the closest one to her, God, that's making her feel unworthy and wondering what is she going to do. But God, right now, I thank you for putting purpose in her life right now, God. Open her eyes, God, that she may have a revelation of the hope and the calling. That you were called for such a time as this. That there's no happen chance that you are holding them kids around. That God is going to use you to restore that neighborhood in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I thank you the work that was started with Audrey is going to finish with you in the name of Jesus. That I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying, pick up the mantle in the name of Jesus, Lord. God, I thank you right now that you don't have to do it on your own, but I hear the Lord saying, put on my word, put on my armor that I have fought this battle for you. That to pick up the shield of faith and that when the darts come, that they shall not come near you. Lord, I thank you right now for renewing purpose in her right now, God. Right now, God, that you're amending brokenness on her heart, God. God, I thank you for restoring her marriage right now in the name of Jesus, God. God, that you didn't just bring him out of the drug house for him to still have the same personality. But right now, break that personality and that stronghold. That in the name of Jesus, Lord, let it start right now with her, God. Loose it in the name of Jesus, God. God, I thank you every stronghold, God, right now, God. That your word said in the name of Jesus, Lord. That if I ask anything in your name, that it shall be given. Lord, that you have given us the keys right now. Now I take this key and I bind every oppression. I bind every depression in the name of Jesus. But I loose the glory of the Lord on her, Lord.
Jesus a hand clap of praise tonight in the house. Come on now, make it glorious tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You love the Lord tonight, amen. Hallelujah, amen. Amen. Kids, you can be dismissed if you'd like to go back to the class, please. Amen. I know Sister Lori's praying still. Amen. We'll let her stay as long as she needs to. Amen. Amen. Can we give this band behind me a great hand, please? Amen. I appreciate them tonight. Amen. Amen. Y'all are, amen. Y'all are good. I love them. Amen. I appreciate them so much. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Who's ready for the word tonight? Amen. Ready for the word tonight? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I appreciate the goodness of God tonight. Hey, can you say the same thing? Appreciate the goodness of God tonight. He's so good to us. Amen. Amen. I thought Frank was going to the kids' class. Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, <laughs> amen. This week's been an unusual week for me. I've been kind of in a fog all week long and studying and meditating on the Lord, what he'd have us to do tonight. And I never take this lightly. At a time I did because I just wanted to be seen, but when you move out of the area you've been wanting to be seen and into the glory, there's got to be a change, amen? And if you let God speak to you through your prayer time and through your, even, I'll just be honest with you, he gets me in the showers. That's my long time of God. I pray with the Lord. I just seek his face, put on some music, and God has spoke to me in some weird ways this week, and I never take God's word as lightly. I mean, I take it with strong force because it is the living word. Can you say amen to that? Amen. It's living. Everything you go through for a reason every season, it's a living word that you can dive into. And I say it all the time, but listen, if we're not reading our word, if we're not studying the word, we have nothing to live on. I got two amens. If we're not living and breathing and eating and drinking this word, we have nothing to live on. This is where I find my strength. This is where I find my strength in hard times. But we're going to be in 1 Samuel tonight. 1 Samuel tonight. 1 Samuel chapter 16. And when you have it, would you please stand to honor God's word tonight, amen? I appreciate the Lord and all he's done in here tonight. It's only going to get better, amen? Turn never said, it's only going to get better. Hallelujah. The Lord brought us here in 1 Samuel 16 to talk about the special anointing. The special anointing. 1 Samuel 16, starting with verse 1, reads like this. And the Lord said unto Samuel... How long wilt thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil, and go, I will send thee to Jesse and Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go if Saul hear it? He will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. Now in this story, just to be plain with you, in this story, uh, there's an enemy right here. There's an enemy out here, and you got to realize that, that Samuel is coming right here. And he said, How, if I go and Saul hear it, he will kill me, and Saul will be the enemy right here. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto, him, unto me him whom I name unto thee. And Samuel did that which the Lord spake and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peaceably? And he said, Peaceably, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not, listen now, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Somebody say the heart. Then Jesse called, oh, somebody said a little louder than that, the heart. The heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by. And he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. 
Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are there all, are they, are here all thy children? Excuse me. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him. Hallelujah. For we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look to and the Lord said arise anoint him for this is he somebody say this is he then Samuel took the horn of oil, hallelujah, and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Father, bless your word. Lord, bless the spirit tonight, God, to give me the words to speak, God. Lord, I thank you and I praise you for what you've already done in this house, God. Lord, there's no reason that we come other than to lift the name of Jesus tonight, Lord. We lift up that name that's above every name, that name above sin, that name that's above cancer, that that name that's above depression. That name that's above everything we fight, Lord. Your name is the great name. And I so thank you, Lord, for being in this house tonight, God. Make preaching effective. Let it go to the heart and to the ears, God. Not just to be hearers, but doers of your word, Father. I love you, and I thank you, and I give you praise for what you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name. And the church said, amen and amen. Can we give God a hand clap of praise as you're seated tonight in the house? Come on, church. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're talking tonight. About the special anointing. The special anointing. The anointing is something that a lot of people have taken out of context. Just because people say, just because they shout and run and speak in tongues, they're anointed. Can I tell you, you're wrong. Uh, just because they look good and sound good does not mean they are anointed. Uh, there's a difference in being Holy Ghost filled and then being anointed. I'm going to hit somebody right there. Uh, you can shout all day long and be Holy Ghost filled, but does your life mirror a picture of being anointed? Come on, somebody. There's a difference tonight, and we saw that Saul has been removed from his title as king. I'm here to tell you, a lot of people are looking for a title rather than a position. A lot of people want the name pastor over their door. A lot of people want the title uh, music director over their door. But God does not look on the outward appearance. Come on, somebody. God is in a generation looking at the heart. And we've spent too much time uh, uh, dwelling on the outward appearance, on if they're good enough, if they sound good enough, if they play good enough, if they preach good enough, to let them on a platform. Can I tell you, you better be saved. You better be sanctified. You better be Holy Ghost filled and know who you are in God before you come up in this house. Come on, somebody. You got to know who you are in God. Like I said before, there's an identity crisis. We prefer a title over a position. I'll be glad to be made the music director all day long, but if I'm not loyal to the bathroom or loyal to the fellowship hall, I have no reason to be any kind of kingdom work because God is not looking for a perfect man or a perfect woman. He's simply looking for somebody just to do the job. Saul has been removed from his title as king. Saul looked the part, but Saul did not have the heart. Saul looked the part as king, but he had a wicked heart. It's so funny how we go day to day and put on our Christian face. And I'm, I'm guilty of it every day. I come in here and I say, hey, ain't you God good? God bless you. When I'm fighting demons in my own life. Come on, somebody. It's so easy. It's so funny. It's Halloween now. We choose to put on a mask to make us seem like somebody's scary or somebody else. But I believe there's more masks in the church than there are in the world. Come on, somebody. I wish you'd help me tonight. I'm going to talk to you tonight. There's a lot more people faking their Christianity than living their Christianity. We'd rather have a big, uh, a big old bougie church and a big old offering plate just give me a handful of people that want to see God move. Just give me a handful of people. Come on, somebody, that know the raw anointing of God and know what God can do because you don't know what I've been through. You don't know who I came out of to be the man of God he called me to be to be today. Saul had the right part, but he had the wrong heart. There's a lot of pastors falling by the wayside because they got the wrong heart. I said before, they're... They worry more about income or outcome than they do income. They care about their people in here than they do about those out there. And if we're going to reach a generation, we got to go beyond the four walls. I don't know why I got on that. Tap your neighbor and say, that's free. That's free. Amen. Look at verse 7. But the Lord said unto Samuel, here's Samuel going to anoint a new king. And the Lord told him when he gets there, 
Don't look at what he looks like. Just anoint who I say to anoint. Verse 7, but the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature because I have refused him. Mm. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Listen, notice, just because you have been appointed does not mean you've been anointed. I wrote that down, the Lord smacked me across the face. Just because you've been appointed to a certain meeting tonight doesn't mean you're going to be anointed. A lot of us come rather to be seen than to be a witness of somebody. A lot of us come to a church house to put on a part, and a lot of times I put on that pastor's hat of coming here and get songs together and try to sing the best I can, play with the guys the best I can. It's hard to follow them guys. They're great. And I tell you what, we come in here looking for one thing to do. We ought to come in here looking to uplift Jesus. Because if Jesus is not the center of our attention, then nothing else should be. He's either first or he's nothing. I said he's either first or he's nothing. The Bible said in verse 7, don't look at what he looks like. Don't pay attention to his height or his stature. Brother Justin, he's got a good body on him. He's really built. He's physique. My first glance, he's short though, yeah, I know. My first glance, I would say he's a mighty man of God. But Justin could be sent on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. But on Sunday, puts on the pastor's hat. I'm not saying you do that. I'm just saying for reference. I'll use me. A lot of times I come in here saying, hey, God, good. God bless you. When I'm out there cussing, drinking, smoking pot, sleeping in beds I shouldn't be in. And God knows the heart. I'm going to tell you something tonight. You cannot hide from God. There will be a day when the darkness shall be made light and God knows exactly what your intent is before you even get to the house of God. Yeah. Hate to be hateful tonight. That's just the way I feel. I'm tired of playing like this. Either you come for a real reason or you don't come at all. What's the real reason? See, somebody's saved. We've lost our backbone in the house of God. We care about the lights. We care about fog. When we ought to care about souls. When was soul killing uh, in the church? It's today we'd rather kill souls than save them. Oh, oh. You don't hear this word no more. I grew up listening to it. Burden. There's no burden for the lost anymore. There's no burden for the dope dealer. There's no burden for the homosexual. Yeah, I said it. There's no burden for the alcoholic. But God is trying to get our attention and not to get our burden back. Get our heart back the way it should be in the first place. Amen. That's what happened with Saul. God didn't like his heart, so what did he do? He kicked him out. Can you imagine some of us being like that? Being stubborn, prideful. God just kick us out. I pray, God, please let me stay humble. Believe it or not, I was one prideful little boy. I thought I was everything in a bag of chips twice on Tuesday. Come on, somebody. And I say, God... He kicked me to the curb one day. I said, God, make me humble. I don't care if I play good. I'm be, can I give my heart tonight? I don't care if I play good, sing good, look good. Just make me humble. Because God is looking for childlike faith. He's looking for childlike faith. He wants somebody who says, I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I trust God. I don't know where it's going to come from, but I trust God. Just because you got a name and got a title does not mean you're all that in a bag of chips. We all fail. We all sin. But God's grace is sufficient. Come on, somebody. That when I hit a bump in the road, his grace can pick me back up and put me back on the road. So verse 7 said, don't look at his countenance. Don't look at what it looks like. Just because you've been appointed does not mean you've been anointed. Watch this. David's anointing did not come too early or too late. David's anointing, I'm going to hit somebody right here. David's anointing came when he was found doing what he'd been called to do. Did you catch that? His anointing ceremony didn't come too early or too late. It came when he was found doing what he was called to do. What was he doing, Brother Hunter? He was out in the sheep field, picking up manure, cleaning sheep off, defending the sheep. We got more wolves in the church than we got sheep. Look. David was found doing what his dad told him to do. He wasn't bashful about it. He said, Father, give me a job and I'll go do it. I'm just talking layman's terms now. So Jesse gave the boy a job to do and David's out there taking care of the sheep. And here comes this man of God. The prophet comes by. Says, I need to see all your sons right now in a row. He calls the first one and Samuel said, that's not him. Second one comes and Samuel says, that's not him either. We go one through seven, and Samuel says, none of these boys are fit for the kingdom. Man, 
Can you imagine being in line that day thinking, God, is it me? Am I the one going to be anointed? And they finally, before I get too ahead of myself, I'm going to say this. He finally calls for David. And look what happens. In verse 10. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen thee. Mm. The Lord hath not chosen these boys. Listen. Jesse made his sons pass before Samuel again and again. I want to tell you this. God is not in the business of picking favorites. Amen. God is not in the business of picking favorites. I find it funny, Brother Frank, how, how the daddy, I, I, I'm going to use Frank for an example. If Cruz was on a football team, I know he loves football, and Frank goes to the coach and says, hey, you seen my boys play last week? Hey, choose him. Pick him. He was good. See what my boy did last time on the field? How I thought he was going to get, I don't know nothing about football. Don't make fun of me. How I thought he was at the line of scrimmage, and I thought he was going to get through somebody. And he kicked a field goal, something like that. I don't know football. But do you see my boy play? And he bugs the coach. Did you see my boy play last week? Wasn't he good? That's what the father was doing in this story. Wasn't he? Notice that. He took his sons around the king seven times. He wanted to show off the good sons. Colton Miller, amen, praise the Lord. Show off the good sons. It's like Frank saying, my boy plays guitar. Choose him. Pick him. Pick him. He's good. He's good. But God is not in the business of picking favorites. Can I really dig down deep tonight? Your daddy cannot get you anointed. Your mama cannot get you anointed. I even go this far. I may lose some people. Your heritage cannot get you anointed. Even though my grandpa preached like fire, I'm not my grandpa. Amen? Got more preachers on coattails than we do in the hellfire tonight preaching the word of God. Amen? People don't want to be real no more. That's what Jesse was doing. Pick mine. Pick this one. Pick this one. He said, ain't you got one more boy? And they said, no, you don't want him. You don't want him. He's out there cleaning the sheep mess up. He's no fit for nothing. He's just a rodeo boy. Ain't good for nothing. The prophet said, that's the one I'm looking for. Let me ask you this. I'll move on. How many times have you been looked over? How many times have you been picked over? I can just see, Frank, those seven boys standing there, all their good clothes, good attire, good looks, saying, it's going to be me. And then the prophet says, that's none of y'all. Y'all need to step aside. I'm calling the one nobody wants. You know who's going to be the greatest preacher in America? Somebody, in, uh, oh, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it. You know who's going to bring revival? Somebody you never saw coming. The one you put down today could be the greatest preacher tomorrow. That's why it pays how you serve people, how you love people, how you treat people. There's no love in the house of God no more. There's no respect in the house of God no more. And David knew that his number would be called one day. He just had to be found working in the field. And I promise if you find yourself working in the field and you seem like it's not going to pay off, just hold on, honey, because there's somebody about to call your name and say you're next in line for a blessing. You're next in line for a breakthrough. Does anybody thank God you're next in line to Hallelujah. Wow. He said, pick these seven boys. They're great. They're good. He said, that's not the one I wanted. Your family cannot get you this special anointing. God is not in the business of picking favorites. That's Facebookable, shareable right there, however you say it. God's not in the business of picking favorites. If he picked favorites, I wouldn't be here. That hurts, don't it? If he had picked favorites, Brother Frank, we wouldn't be here, buddy. We wasn't worth much. All I knew was girls and money and music. Come on, somebody. Thought I was the sexiest thing come out of Saudi Daisy. I still am. Amen. I'm just anointed sexy now. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm joking. Donkey. Amen. <laughs> but God has to humble us. That way he can promote us. My He's got to humble us, Sister Panga, so he can promote us. When I worked at Food City, I was fine being on the register for a while, but I wanted that manager position. What I had to do, and I got that position, thank God, I had to start dressing different. I had to start acting different. If I wanted that next role, I had to do a certain thing. Sometimes to get to a place you've never been, you've got to do something you've never done. Whew. 
And Jesse knew he had boys that was good, talented, called maybe. But there was one, my gosh, I'm, I, he's feeding me like I'm feeding you. They were all called, but one got anointed. I thank God he didn't pass me by. You saying you're holier than me? I'm not holier than nobody. I'm just glad I'm picked out of the bunch. Amen? I feel like tonight God's trying to get us back on level one and just say, thank God he picked me when he could have passed me by. Amen? We, I love to shout like everybody else, but I love knowing that I was once lost. Now I'm found. I'm not who I used to be. And because of the blood, if he did it for me, I know he'll do it for you tonight. Amen? I love shouting, running, and doing messages, but I tell you what, it's time we get back to the basics. It's time we get back. Names don't matter no more. Titles don't matter no more. I just want to be in a house with a handful of people that knows the power of God, knows how to get through to God. I don't want no fancy light show. I don't want no fancy pastor. I just want a humble sheepfold right here tonight, amen, that knows what God can do in your life. I thank God I'm in that church tonight. Hallelujah, ain't you? Thank God. This is helping me. I hope it's helping you tonight. This is so good to me. Verse 13, look at this. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from the day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Listen, God is about to anoint you in front of those that rejected you. Two people said amen. God is about to anoint you in front of those that rejected you. Can you imagine each son of Jesse standing before Samuel thinking they would be the one to be anointed? But instead, they would be rejected just like Saul was. Mm. And when Samuel called for the brother that everyone had forgot about, he was anointed. Look, we've all been pushed by the way. We've all been cast aside. We've all been tormented some way. Thinking we're no good for nothing. Anybody feel like that sometimes? Feel like you've just been rejected? Feel like God has no dealings with you? God is saying, through get back in covenant with me. You know what? God's not looking for a person that has religion. He's looking for a relationship. I'll always say this till I die. The number one reason God made man, I believe it's all my heart, because God was lonely. He wanted somebody to dwell with or talk to. Can you believe the Garden of Eden was the holiest place that God made so far? Until sin entered in the garden. Things were perfect between God and Adam. But when the devil snuck in and made Adam question who he was and Eve come in. and I know we joke about the wives, me and the devil sometimes, but no, it wasn't how it was. Sin crept in the garden. Got a hold of Eve. Eve got a hold of Adam. Adam got a hold of the apple. And ever since then we've had a sin problem. And you feel rejected and left out. But God is about to bless you in front of those that cursed you. I feel this with all my heart. God is about to extend your calling in your ministry in front of those that tried to demolish your ministry. My God. The same people that counted you out is the one that God is counting in tonight. I want to tell you with all my heart, I know we're so simple tonight, but don't give up on God. Don't throw in the towel just yet. You keep fighting. You keep praying. You keep reading the Bible. And sooner or later, God's about to bless you in front of your enemy tonight. He's about to set up a table where your enemies have to watch you eat of the goodness of God tonight. He's not forgotten you. Your brothers may have. Your sisters may have. But God hadn't forgot you. God had not forgot you. One thing about David, this was the primary anointing right here where he was picked to be anointed for king of Israel because Saul, remember, got kicked out. So did the other seven brothers got kicked out and God chose a little sheep boy named David. This was the primary anointing and he would have other anointings throughout his reign as king. Do you know that? Read it up. That whole first Samuel and second Samuel's rich. You got to read it when you get home. He had more anointings because look, there's times in my life I get anointed sometimes, and sometimes I get dry. One thing my dad taught me about a car was you got to check your oil in it every two weeks. Well, he told me, son, my dad was a truck driver, so he was big about checking his oil, checking his brake fluid, all that stuff. So I guess that got into me too. We check our oil almost every week. <laughs> I do. Because I don't want to run dry. The moment you run dry, it causes problems in your automobile. And it won't function won't function like it used to. My God. 
I believe the church is in a dry season tonight. We get happy on Sunday mornings, don't we? Can I be real, not, you are, not hurt me, not hate me? Then we get dry on Thursday nights. And it takes something Thursday night to prep us up. You know what? God didn't call us to be cheerleaders. He called us just to be leaders. My gosh. And we've hit a dry season at times. Sister Judy, I get dry. My prayer life gets dry. And things start rubbing together that shouldn't rub together. Woo! This is rich. You start mingling with the world and mingling with the word. Can I tell you, you cannot do those things right now. You got to either be for God or you're against God. There ain't no riding the fence. You ride a picket fence, you'll get hurt. But I want to have enough oil in my tank to stay slippery for Jesus. I want to glide into heaven with Jesus. I want to. I don't want things to rub raw in my life. I want things to go smooth. Is that the case every week? No. That baby ain't bothering me. Bless his heart. Amen. If I can't preach over a baby, I shouldn't preach at all. Thank you, Papa. Taught me that one. Amen. Praise the Lord. How many of you here's run dry before spiritually? Dry. I'm talking bone dry. I'm talking Ezekiel 37 dry. What nothing left but dust. I've been there. Can I be real for a minute? Sunday mornings I wake up drier than most sometimes. It's a fight just to make it to the house of God, it seems like nowadays. Ain't it? It's easy to go to the bar when he's drinking. It's easy to go to that club when he's smoking dope. Now it seems so hard to get to the house of God. We had to like well, it's like it's a burden just to come to the house of God nowadays. I put everything else before God, and when I get there, I'll just get there and leave. You're dry. I'll listen to the same preaching 15 minutes long and just go home and live how I want to. You're dry. There's no oil. You've not been anointed for this time. You've been appointed to come here for a season, but you're still not leaving anointed. God wants to get you appointed and also get you anointed. Somebody say, I'm glad I'm anointed for such a time as this. I'm not dry tonight. I'm afraid the problem in the church is not a sin problem anymore. It's an oil problem. Used to when I was growing up, preachers wouldn't preach without an oil bottle being in the church. That's how I was raised. If there wasn't an oil bottle or an altar, they wouldn't preach in it. Because you got to have those two things. Does that oil hold power? No. Does that altar hold power? You bet it don't. But it's the faith in believing in the contact of the oil of the anointing of God and find yourself, I thank God, there was an altar when, I, when the Spirit drove me to get saved because that was where I met the Lord in the holies of holies. When I had nobody else beside me, I could come to an altar and where I was dry, I could get refilled with the oil of God. I thank God we've not lost our oil or the altars. You know what we've lost? The preaching of the word. We're looking for opinions more than the facts. I don't want your opinion. I want the facts of the word. I got one more thing and I'll close. I know it was deep tonight, but people have may have thrown you away and forgot about you. When I was growing up, I tell a story to make this come full circle. I was real big into wrestling when I was growing up. At WWF, WWE. When I was growing up, they had these things called wrestling buddies. I had, they were about this big, about that wide. Had Hulk Hogan, uh, Macho Man, Randy Savage. Had somebody else. It's about that big. They was made out of cotton. It was like a big old pillow. And I'd wrestle that thing, wrestle that thing. And we, we went to move from the big house. When mom and dad divorced, we moved out of the big house and uh, moved out. We got storage building. I got to missing that thing. I got to thinking about when I was growing up and what I did with that. What I do with that thing. I had VHS on VHS, wrestling ring after wrestling ring of wrestlers, different stuff I grew up doing that I loved to do as a kid. And my mind went to thinking, what do I do with that stuff? You all have something special you have in your life. You thought, what do I do with that? Where do I, where do I put that? See, a lot of us have done our anointing that way. We put it in a closet somewhere. Because we're too ashamed to walk how God called us to walk. We don't walk according to our statue. We ought to walk to God's statue. And the Lord made me check myself in my office a while ago before I come out. I said, Hunter, where have you put your anointing? Just like you lost that wrestling, buddy. You've lost it. Where's it at? I said, God, have I lost it? He said, no, it's just dry. 
When I go to get an oil change at the car place, they usually say, you want it all the way full, or how much do you want? And they usually put it all the way full. And they show you the stick before you leave. Right? They show you the oil stick. Sir, this is what we've done. It was seventy nine ninety five for your oil change, new wipers, new headlights, new tires. I didn't ask for all that. It came in the package. Well, I didn't ask for a package. I just want my oil change. He said, we made sure we had everything checked before you left this garage. <laughs> Even though it costs more. Ugh. Even though that check costs more, I was still able to drive my car without any problems because everything had been checked on the checklist. We'll tell you something, the anointing cost. The anointing cost David. What are you talking about, Hunter? He lost his firstborn son because of sin. He had to give it up. The Lord took his son because of sin. It cost. He had to face a lion and a bear, and he won, but it cost him something. He faced Goliath, but it cost him something. The anointing you have tonight will always cost you something. That's why it pays to serve God the best ability that you can. You cannot be wishy-washy. God is not calling a wishy-washy church. If the pe people come back to the instruments, please, man, would you come? God is looking for a people that will have oil in their lamps. Man, that way we don't have just oil, but we have light. I went to Ruach, was it last week? Brother Jim Rayleigh taught the tabernacle. And uh, he talked about how the candlestick did not use its own light. It was a oil base. They put oil in the lamps. See, like a normal candle, it depends on the wick to keep it burning, right? But the oil, the lamp relied on the oil. And if the oil ran out, there was no light. And I heard Brother Jim, he's on the road coming here tonight, and I began to listen to Brother Jim talk about it. He said, what did he say, honey? A dark house is a clean house because you cannot see without the light. A dark house, get this, it's deep. A dark house is a clean house. But until light is put on it, you can see every speckle, every mistake, everything we do that's wrong in the house. And you'll know you've messed up because you've stumped your toe in the dark. Listen. I wish every day I had time to make an inventory of my life. We ought to take time every day to make an inventory of our life. What's good, what's bad, what's ugly. I got more ugly than the pretty inside me than you even know. <laughs> There's a lot of ugly on this face. A lot of ugly in this life. But I'm glad I'm not perfect. If I was perfect, I wouldn't have nothing to strive for. Man, that's a good question, Holy Ghost. If I was perfect, I wouldn't have nothing to fight for, nothing to strive for. I think God didn't. Call the qualified. He qualified the called. And in those dry seasons, it's okay to be dry, but don't let it go to your head. Don't let it go to your heart. As soon as you get an opportunity to get to an altar, get to it. Get filled back up. David was assigned and appointed, and then after he was appointed, he was anointed. God's not picking favorites tonight. He's saying, whosoever will. If they want to, come. I don't know what they'll play, just something soft if they would. Let's all stand it out with every head bowed, every eye closed. Hallelujah. Look, there's a reason we're all here tonight. There's a reason why you're in this building tonight. God has called you for such a time as this. He's asking one question and I have nobody looking around. What is your oil life like? Are you full? Are you half full? Or are you running on empty? The woman at the well brought her water pot because she's been doing the same thing all her life. Repetitious living. Water pot after water pot, visit after visit. But after one encounter with a man called Jesus, she left her water pot because she was no longer thirsty, but she was full and she would continue to be full the days of her life. All because she met a man named Jesus. Now I dare say tonight there's some in the house, could be me as well. We've ran this week and we've tried to fight the devils this week, but somewhere along the line we've gone dry. And God is calling this church tonight on Thursday night to check your oil tonight 
How are you living? What are you living? How are you talking? What are you talking? Listen, the power of life and death.